I. So you guys came back, really convincing win here. After the loss against TSM last week, how are you feeling coming into this week? Well, I didn't... You don't keep what happened last week with you this week. So, for example, if you went 0-2 last week, you just forget about that. And if you okay. went 2-0, you still forget about it. So I, I haven't thought about that, actually, at all. Cool. So you just came in business as usual. How are you feeling against XDG specifically? Um, Not different, really. They're, we treat all teams the same. So it's not like we're expecting, like, I don't, I don't know. It's just We treat every team the same no matter what. So Was there any imp like particular pick or ban strategy you have against XDG? Do your bans differ? Who are you targeting? Stuff like that? Well, for every team, there's like certain things you can do versus each team depending mm -hmm. on what they play, what they main. For example, well, I'm not going to say I guess because that'd be bad. <laughs> But I would say, yeah, there's a specific strat yeah. as far as like one or two things that we do do against them that we think is good. So, Right. Well, one thing that everyone notices about Cloud9 is how well you guys team fight. Mm -hmm. And there were definitely two instances in this game where you just destroyed XDG and team fights. If we can get the first one up on the screen, I kind of want you to tell us how you guys communicate so well. Because we saw some of these with the voiceovers, and you guys weren't talking that much. Walk me through this fight. All right. Well, so uh, I want to go in this fight here. We saw that Kale burned ult. So we basically go in. We're focusing on the front line. I jump in. I have to start cutting back because I'm low. We get one kill. I get the reset. I know Kale doesn't have ult, so I jump on him, get yeah. the kill, and then I just get out. So Because your whole team is just kind of ready for it. They're all waiting for you to jump in. Yeah. Is that just because you played together so much? Pretty much. We, we, we knew what to do, and I knew who to focus. I saw that Kale had no ult, so I knew he was dead, and my front, or team was focusing the front line. So I knew as long as I could kill Kale, I have an escape route after I do kill him. So we, we wanted the fight there, and we just know how the fight goes. So... Yeah. And there was a fight right after this one as well that was even crazier, and it happened directly after. Let's pull this one up on the screen as well. Talk me through what your team then was thinking since you guys seemed to be in each other's head when this happened. All right, so I wanted to get some damage there, but then I basically said I'm going in here. Just I, I knew I could go in by myself. I saw them low, no KO. Mm. And then the moment I went in, my team just basically said, hey, he went in, let's back him up. So they just had my back basically when I jumped in. I don't need to tell them to come back me up because they'll just do it. Yeah, and then Lemonation was just landing hook after hook this yeah. game. Yeah, it was really helping that he's landing off his CC too, so we were just getting free kills off that. And then Mido suicide for me, that was kind of sad. At least you got him back. Yeah, they At least he died. got ace for that, so I would say not worth. Yeah. <laughs> well, vengeance is always sweet, of course, as well. So then I want to ask you then about your teammates a little bit. First off, um, I want to talk about to you about balls, because you're still bringing out Rumble here when everyone's playing mostly tanky top laners. You guys are running a lot of your old school picks. Why is that working for you guys? Well, Rumble's a good champion. I it's not that he doesn't fit the meta, it's just that the other top laners in North America don't play him as well as Balls do. Mm -hmm. You can look at every the seven other top laners and none of them will play Rumble as good as him. And most of them don't even play Rumble. So it's not that he isn't good, they just don't have the option to play him. Okay. And it's, it's the different play style with Rumble. It's definitely not a champion that you just pick to like AFK farm. Yeah. You want to make plays with it, you want to roam, you want to do what you can. So like when he roamed mid and got the kill on kill with me, that was a very good roam. Mm -hmm. And a lot of top laners just like AFK farming or PvE, as Dyrus would say. Yeah. So it's a different play style, and not every top laner can do it. Okay, then I want to ask you about Medios here as well. He went 10-0 and 41 in Lee Sin over his last three Lee Sin games. Tell me about how awesome he's been for you guys. Right, so he's been playing a lot of Lee Sin in solo queue. He loves that champion. And is a very good champion, depending on your play style. Our previous play style from the last split, I would say would not work with it. We didn't really pressure the jungle. We didn't really pressure the lanes that much. Mm -hmm. And coming in this split, if you watch that game, we tried our best to pressure all lanes and keep their jungle warded and pressured it. So this time around, we have a better play style for his Lee Sin. So it's working out really well. It's an aggressive champion, and we're trying to play around that. Well, it cool. is interesting, though, that you decided to have him play Lee Sin because it's with a new play style. What made you decide to change your style from last season, knowing that you were so successful 25-3? and three? Well, when you watch the best teams in the world, like SKT1, mm -hmm. they didn't have the same play style as us. They like being aggressive. They like making initiative plays. They're fine trading things. So we figure if the best team in the world by far is doing something we're not, we should try and see what we can do too. Right. And we're just adapting it towards our own play style. So we still have a bit of what we do, but we like what they do as well. All right, hi, thank you very much. So we had Bjergsen on the desk earlier. We asked him uh, the question we're asking to our audience, which is, uh, you have any player on the North American LCS, who would you duo queue with, but not on Cloud9? To win solo queue or to have fun? Uh, go with both. To win, I would definitely pick Wild Turtle. He has like an insane win rate. I don't know. It's just, if he plays bottom, I can guarantee that he won't be useless. And if I play mid, I, I more or less won't be useless either. And when your AP carry and your AD carry aren't useless people, you're <laughs> probably going to win. Because top lane can't carry. Like, okay. it's very hard for top lane to carry. Jungler, they're not going to carry unless it's like a Zingy Karthus jungler or something. I don't know. The mm -hmm. guy's kind of crazy. But yeah. for the most part, to win solo queue, you want your AP and your AD carry to be useful. And if I have Turtle, I know he'll do good. How about who just to hang out with? 
Uh, not on my team? Yeah. I honestly don't know. Maybe like, what about? Just kidding. I don't have an answer right oh. now. All right, it's fine. I'm on it's this turtle. I'm on this turtle. Doesn't associate with anyone else. Yeah. Still wild turtle. Guys, yeah. we're going to throw it across the studio to Riv and Jap for our next match. But as we do, listen in to one of the ways Coast hopes to get, over, uh, get the upper hand over Dignitas.